Hey everybody, good morning. This is Mr. Alvar. I'm going to go ahead and go over, which may be somewhat familiar to you, but I want to spend at least one lesson here going over the area of a triangle because we're going to get into different areas here. Uh, we're definitely kind of shifting focus here in geometry and moving on to area, surface area, volume, all those kind of things, the, the, the measurements of the area and the volume of, you know, two-dimensional solids and, and three-dimensional solids. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about triangles today specifically, okay? So get into that. I thought we'd do that before we got into trapezoids and other shapes. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I thought I'd start off with going over what the parts of a triangle are, which, I mean, I know there's not a ton of parts to a triangle, but it does help to kind of know what we're talking about when I, when I say things like the base or the height, or if I, I use the word like perpendicular, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, so the parts of a triangle are, uh, what I have written down for the parts of a triangle is that the height of a triangle is the perpendicular segment. And I have a little side note for what perpendicular means. But the perpendicular, if you guys are talking about the word perpendicular, perpendicular means when two sides or two segments, two lines, uh, meet at a 90 degree angle. So they meet at a right angle. That's what perpendicular is all about. All right, so the height of a, of a triangle is the perpendicular segment from a vertex to the line containing the opposite side. The opposite side is called the base of the triangle. And the terms base and height are used to represent the important segments of a triangle. Those are the two most important parts of a triangle. And so just kind of, I, I've got three triangles drawn here below and just want to just talk about like, okay, what, on those particular triangles, what are the bases, what are the heights, you know? So on this particular triangle, now look, a lot of times, if you look for that right angle, that's going to be a good indication of where the base and the height is, especially the height. Okay, so this right here is the base. We can call that the base. And this is the height right here. So that's the height, because we know that's the height because it's meeting the base at a 90 degree angle right there. All right, on this one, here's the 90 degree angle, and you have this red line right here. I should have really made it dashed. But that's your base, and right there is your height. Now this, right here, I have an arrow drawn in there already, but that's your height. Not this, that's not your height. I should put in there, not height. This right here is not your height. Height has to be straight up and down, and it has to be perpendicular. It has to be perpendicular to the base. Just think about like if you're measuring your own height. Do you measure your height at an angle? Would you, would you put a tape measure at the top of your head and then measure that tape measure at a diagonal to the floor? Or would you want to measure your height perpendicular to the floor? Obviously, this one would work. And this, if you use that method, you could be any height you wanted to be. But uh, when you measure height, it's got to be perpendicular to the floor. On the third example here, uh, this is a good example because it shows the height right here. This shows the height drawn outside of the, um, of the triangle. Now, the reason for that is that this triangle is obtuse. All right, so we couldn't, we couldn't necessarily draw a line within the triangle. The, the height had to be kind of shown with outside the triangle because it's an obtuse angle here. So this still is the base, but the base had to be somewhat extended to show you that the height is perpendicular to that base. Like I said, these are not heights right here. Those are not the heights. I know they seem like the heights, but they're not. The height has to be at a 90 degree angle. That's very important. All right, now let's move on to the formula. Now, some of you might be familiar with this formula. The area of a triangle, uh, the, the typical formula that you're going to see is going to be 1 half times B times H. So what that means is, you know, 1 half 
we don't really need to write the words for that, times the base times the height. Now you'll notice that the area of a triangle closely resembles the area for a parallelogram. And the reason for that is because a triangle is essentially half of a parallelogram. If I take this triangle and I kind of, I'm not going to do a great job here at it, but if I kind of draw a reflection of it somewhat right here, you'll notice what shape I, I've made. Like this shape right here, joined up with this shape, is now a parallelogram. And the area of a parallelogram is base times height. That's all there is to it. If you're just going to do, you're just going to do base times height for uh, of a parallelogram. You might know that as like uh, length times width, but a parallelogram, you have to be careful with height. You know, height is uh, especially when you're talking about height in geometry. Look for that right angle, and that is the true height of something. The height can never be diagonal to the base. So, if you thought of those as the height, that's not going to be it. Yeah, but the reason that a triangle has that one half in it is because it's half of a, a triangle is always going to be a half of a parallelogram uh, with the same base and same height. It's always going to be that way. Uh, some of you, you know, especially like I said, like I'm treating this this particular lesson as a review. I think some of you probably have done the area of a triangle before, or hopefully you have, but maybe you've done as an alternative approach, or maybe you've alternatively been told that uh, when you find area of a triangle, you could do base times height. And I, I don't disagree with this way at all. You could do base times height and then just divide that by two. As long as you multiply base and height first and then divide by two last, you're good. Because that means exactly the same thing as multiplying by one half. You know, multiplying by one half and dividing by two are equivalent operations, more or less. I mean, I know you're you're multiplying in one of them and you're dividing in the other, but multiplying by one half is the same thing as dividing by two. Okay, now the question I'm asking here is, must triangles be congruent to have the same area? All right, and maybe that's totally obvious to you right now, but none of these triangles are congruent. And in order for a triangle to be congruent, that means everything is the same. And obviously, these are some of these are different triangles. I mean, like right here, this that's a that's a right triangle. This is an obtuse triangle. This right here is an ice. Uh, I don't know if it's isosceles, but I know it's acute, right? And uh, you know, so they don't necessarily have to be congruent, do they? But if you notice, every one of them has the same base and the same height. Thirteen is the base. Eight is the height. Now, in a right triangle, the height will always be connected to that right angle. Here's the base, there's the height. There's the base on this one, there's the height. And no matter which way you guys do this, if you guys do one half times 13 times eight, or if you do 13 times eight divided by two, you're gonna end up with the same outcome. And 13 times eight is what? 104. And 104 divided by two is 52. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into some examples here. This first example, we've got a base of 10, and this right here, that represents the height. So area of a triangle is going to be 1 half times base, so times 10, times 6. Now 1 half times 10 is 5. 5 times 6 is 30. And then make sure whenever you write anything for area, area is always going to be square units. So there's the first one right there. The area of that one is 30 square centimeters, not 60. It's not 10 times 6. 60 would be the area of a parallelogram with the same base and the same height. You know, the parallelogram would look like something like this. Just double that up a little bit. It would be a rectangle, you know, be a, a 10 by 6 rectangle. But remember, a triangle is half of a parallelogram, and a rectangle is a parallelogram. Now, I tried to throw some different examples together here. Now, this, this one's kind of a good one to show you that uh, sometimes, think, sometimes people think that the base must be the bottom of something, and that's not necessarily true. The base just needs to be perpendicular to a number that represents the height. 
Now this right here, that represents the height. And then how do you know that's the height? Well, there's a right angle right here. So that means that this is, you know, perpendicular, the base right here. I know that's the top of it, but that is perpendicular to this segment right here, which represents the height of that triangle. So that's really the, like I said, the important parts of the triangle are the base and the height. If you know what those parts are, it really doesn't even matter what all the other numbers are, unless you're looking for a perimeter. So the area of this one is going to be 1 half times 7 times 4. Now one thing that's allowed in math is to change the order of multiplication. So I'm going to do 1 half times 4 times 7 because it's much easier to take half of an even number. So 1 half times 4 is 2. And then you got 2 times 7, which is 14. So the answer to this one is going to be 14 square yards. That's the area. Area equals 14 square yards, not 28. 7 times 4 is 28. This the next example right here is another one where I'm, I'm showing you that the height, you know, the height of it is drawn as a segment that's outside of the triangle. And the base has been extended in a little bit of a way, but this is still the base right here. Okay, so the base is 12 inches right there, and the height is 12 inches. 3 equals 1 half times base times height. Now, in both uh, numbers, the base and the height are the same number, so we're going to do 1 half times 12 times 12. 1 half times 12 is 6, and 6 times 12 is 72. So there you go. Area equals 72 what? 72 square inches. Uh, the last example here is going to take a little bit of algebra. It says find the height, find h. This is one where we don't know what the height is. Um, if the area is 63 uh, square centimeters, 63 centimeters squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a little bit of an equation here. So remember, area of a triangle is 1 half times base times height. When we solve an equation, a lot of times we have the answer. The answer is 63. What we're solving for is an unknown. We don't know what the height is. So we're going to set up all the problems. We're going to set up all the numbers that we do know on this particular triangle. So we know that this is always 1 half. We know that the base is 14. And we know that the height is the unknown. So we'll call that h. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to do, let's just do 1 half times 14 first. I'm going to drop down the 63. 1 half times 14 is 7. And then I'm just going to attach the h to it. So 7 becomes like the coefficient of h, 7 times h. If you want to put a dot between it, go ahead. And now you have an equation. You have a one-step equation that you can solve. And remember, to solve a one-step equation, you divide both sides by the number that is next to the letter, right? The coefficient of h. So we're going to divide both sides by 7. Now these 7's right here. They cancel out, and then you're stuck with 73, or you're stuck with 63 divided by 7. And what you're left with there is 63 divided by 7. Now, 63 divided by 7, that works out perfectly. 63 divided by 7 is 9. So the height in this case is 9. Now, should I write 9 square centimeters like we've been doing for all the other problems? No. We didn't find area. We already knew the area. The area was 63 square centimeters. We just needed to know that the height was 9 centimeters, not square centimeters. And if you don't trust that, you know, just like I, I always talk about, you can go ahead and plug that in. Let's see if that works. You know, 1 half times 14 times 9, that should equal 63 if we do everything right. So 1 half times 14 is 7, and 7 times 9 is 63. So that does it for this lesson. Now this was kind of just a lesson on um, reviewing the uh, area of a triangle because I, I just want to just kind of get used to just doing these formulas and using those before we get into um, bigger and better things. Uh, and hopefully you guys got this lesson. This lesson wasn't too tough. So all right everybody have a great day and please let me know if you have any questions about anything. And that is it. See you later. Take care.